Hi there. I'm Cindy Linden, and this is the Cook Along Podcast. Where I am, it is peach season. Peaches, nectarines, plums. We are, of course, going to bake something instead of just eating them fresh. Not that there's anything wrong with eating them fresh, but there's no recipe there, so there wouldn't be much of a podcast. So I am here today with you to make some juicy peach crisp. That is the name of the recipe. You will be able to find the ingredient list on my website, which is thecookalongpodcast.com. And later, if you wanted to be able to make this with a printed version of the recipe in front of you, instead of listening to me, charming though I might be, if you didn't want to listen to me a second time, you can find the printed version of the recipe on my Patreon page, which is patreon.com. And then you type in the Cook Along Podcast, and you will find my Patreon page where you can subscribe and receive printed versions of the recipes as I publish them. I have chosen this recipe today because it is National Peach Pie Day. That is the 24th of August for those of you listening on a different date. National Peach Pie Day. And I decided, well, honestly, I just decided I didn't want to make a pie. And I have this really excellent peach crisp recipe, which is just a little faster and easier because you don't have to deal with a pie crust. And I just was, I paused after the word excellent because I have written down on the bottom of my recipe, this is, and then in all caps, excellent. So there you have it from the expert, from me at some time when I thought it was amazing. I'm going to give you your ingredient list. It's pretty simple. And most things you probably will have in the house, except for the peaches. And I just came from essentially a farmer's market. It's a local co-op growers outlet. So my peaches are fresh and I am using Alberta, excuse me, Alberta freestone peaches. And that means that they come off of the pit really easily, which is helpful. Almost any peaches will be fine. And in fact, if you are not in peach season as you listen to this, or if you just don't want to mess with the peaches, having to pit them, because we also have to peel them, you don't want to do that stuff, you can buy sliced peaches in the grocery store in the frozen section, and then you don't have to do any of this work. I was fortunate enough to have somebody peel my peaches for me. My partner peeled the peaches, and it turns out that you really can't use a peeler, you know, a vegetable peeler on them. We had to use a paring knife on them because the vegetable peeler, the skin is too soft on a peach, and it just kind of slides off. So, sorry, back to the ingredient list. Six fresh peaches, or your best guess about the equivalent of six peaches from a frozen bag. And I kind of think it's likely to be about, I'm looking at my one cup measure and my peaches in front of me. I'll bet you it's about six cups, five cups, maybe five cups, five cups of peaches. I'll try to measure this as I go, and that way we'll know by the time I get done. Not that that will help you right now, but... It's the best I can do. You need a half a teaspoon of almond extract, a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You could leave one of those out. I don't recommend it. The almond is just amazing with the peaches, and I'd be sad if you had to leave that out. But if you only have vanilla, go with the vanilla and only do a half a teaspoon. You don't need both. I just put both because I like both flavors in here. Half a cup of all-purpose flour, half a cup of quick oats, So that's rolled oats, but the quick cooking one minute kind, not instant oatmeal, but the one minute oats. And that's because they soften up more quickly. So if you use whole rolled oats, you're going to find that it's a little chewier and doesn't quite do what we need it to do here. A cup of white sugar, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. And I am going to suggest if you happen to have any in the house, a little pinch Really, just a pinch of some ground cardamom is nice with the peaches as well. If you don't have that, please don't worry about it. It's not important. It's just a sort of extra little perk and not a required item. Just stick with the cinnamon. And then a quarter teaspoon salt and a half a cup of butter. That's your full ingredient list. And you're going to need an 8 by 8 baking pan. I call it a brownie pan. And... Maybe just one bowl, really, probably just one bowl. Do-aheads, you need to peel the peaches, pit the peaches, 
and slice the peaches, which I am doing right now as I'm talking to you. I'm just slicing them so that they will fit into the pan. And you need to preheat your oven to 375. And I'm not going to do that because I'm going to use my toaster oven yet again. I think you've heard me talk about how much I actually end up cooking in my toaster oven. Anything that will fit into an 8x8 pan, maybe I have a big toaster oven. It's not tall, but maybe it's a little deep because I can use an 8x8 pan in my toaster oven and it saves energy. It also means that I can cook something like this on a hot day. Not that today is hot, but I could if I wanted to and not heat up my whole house. So I do love cooking in my toaster oven. I should sponsor some toaster oven. I should do that and help pay my way here. The toaster oven I use is a Breville. They come in a couple sizes, but because my kitchen is old, I had to get the smaller one because the really big, nice one is too tall to fit under my kitchen cabinets, which are low. I guess back in the olden days, Back in the 50s, when my kitchen was made, the cabinets were lower than what they do now. And if you walk into a modern kitchen, I'm slicing peaches as we talk. If you walk into a modern kitchen, the cabinets, are they start much higher. There's more space between the counter and the bottom of the cabinet, which I totally get in terms of space for appliances, because appliances are tall these days. Maybe they always have been, but it seems to me that they get taller. So now the cabinets start much higher. And in talking about remodeling our kitchen, that was one thing I didn't want. I mean, I guess I don't really have a choice, because that's what you do when you modernize a kitchen, is your cabinets start higher. But it's a proven scientific fact, an unfortunate one, that we get shorter as we age. And so I'm thinking about these cabinets that are going to be higher than they are now, and that we're going to get rid of the soffit, which is up at the top, and put cabinets up there. And I'm thinking, okay, so the things on the bottom shelves now are going to be less comfortable for me to reach. And the things on the top shelves, I won't be able to reach at all without some kind of a step stool. And so here I am, getting older every day and thinking, all right, I'll be shorter. Can't reach the ones on the lower shelves. The cabinets will be taller. So I'll have to be using a step stool. Going back around in that circle, I'm getting older. And now I'm going to be using a step stool. I don't know. It just stops making sense. Modernizing the kitchen is likely to make it less accessible as I get older. Doesn't that seem backwards? Anyway, that's just my sort of rambling thought process. Still need to modernize the kitchen. I am in this kitchen with 1951 blue tile counters and cabinets that haven't ever been updated. And they're old and wood and we have to do it. But it just seems a little counterintuitive somehow. Counterintuitive. Oh, that was an accident, but it's pretty good. Okay, so the peaches are sliced, and now I'm going to see how many cups six peaches make. And these were not huge peaches. They are probably medium to small. Oh, there's one more do-ahead. You have to grease the pan that that you're going to put them in. You could smear that with butter, because butter is always a good flavor. We're going to add butter to this in a minute anyway. Or you can just spray it, which is what I did. And then you put the peaches, just spread them out in the bottom of your pan. So I got one cup here. That was about a peach and a half. Yeah. Of the size peaches that I'm using, a cup seems to be about a peach and a half. So if I've got six peaches, that means I've got four and a half cups, right? Is that math right? Yeah, it might be a little more like five, which is what I first estimated. Yeah, that's four. All right, I'm going to stand by my initial estimate. Five cups. If you're using frozen peaches, five cups. Be sure there aren't any ice crystals on them because that's just water and it's going to make this too juicy and soupy and you don't want that. Yep, five cups almost exactly. All right, six peaches, five cups. I feel better, do you? You just pour those into the bottom of the dish and it stacks up pretty high. And then we have two more wet ingredients, essentially. Peaches are a wet ingredient. So are your extracts. So get your half teaspoon measure. Be sure your peaches aren't stacked exactly on top of each other. 
and measure out a half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm using cheap vanilla for this. It's just imitation vanilla. And just sprinkle that over the top, kind of a little at a time. And speaking of imitation vanilla, I'm going to encourage you to go to my website, thecookalongpodcast.com, and read my blog about imitation vanilla. I think it'll surprise you, and you can save a ton of money if you believe what I tell you in that article, okay? And I'm not the only one talking about it. Professional cooks are talking about it too. The last liquid ingredient is the almond extract, and you want a half teaspoon of that, and we're doing the same. Pour it into the half teaspoon and then just sort of drizzle it over the top of the peaches. And that is the liquid ingredients. Now we're going to mess with some dry ones. Oh, I love the smell of that almond, that almond extract. It goes so well with the peaches. Now here's where you need your bowl. And in the bowl, we're going to put the flour, half a cup. And again, as usual, because we don't want this to be pasty and really thickly floury. The, the flour is just to thicken it a little, so we don't want too much. So stir up your flour before you start, and then spoon it into your measuring cup and level it off at half cup. Because you know if you scoop it, you get way too much. And there's a blog about that too. I think that's called How to Measure Flour the Right Way on the website. Lots of fun information there. And they're all short, easy to read. Take less than two minutes to read probably. Anyway, put the flour into the bowl. And then put your half cup of quick cooking oats into the bowl with that. Then we need a cup of regular sugar. Just plain white sugar, just put it in the bowl. I know, it's a lot. Sorry about that, but this is dessert. I'm not one of those people who decides dessert should be as healthy as possible. If you're having dessert, by golly, I think you should have dessert and let go of any future regrets. Just decide not to regret it. Okay, now we need a quarter of a cup of packed brown sugar. See, it gets even worse. <laughs> it's okay. It's dessert. This comes together pretty fast. I hope you're noticing because we're almost done. Half teaspoon of ground cinnamon. I'm using a uh, Penzi cinnamon, which is a blend of five different kinds of cinnamon. I would think a good cinnamon here, as opposed to a cheap grocery store cinnamon, would be worth it because it's going to be noticeable. And then, because I happen to have it, I'm just going to put a pinch. I mean, like, I don't know, what is that? Maybe a sixteenth of a teaspoon of ground cardamom in here. Yeah, it just is a tiny bit of a smell. You can add a little more if you feel like you can't smell it in there. But it's a really pretty strong flavor, and you don't want this to taste like cardamom. You just want this to kind of back up the cinnamon and peach flavors. And I think I can smell it in there, so I'm going to stop. quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a half a cup of butter. Well, actually, let's stir this up first. Let's get the dry ingredients stirred together before we go making things harder. Your butter you probably want just a tiny bit soft, but not very soft. We don't want it so soft that it's going to smush, because what we want it to do is chop up, essentially, into little tiny bits that get mixed around in the flour. And for that, oh, here's the other piece of equipment. I knew there was one. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you have a pastry cutter, that's the easiest way to do this. I'm going to use a pastry cutter, but if you don't have one, you'll need a couple of regular table knives. And I can describe this, but you might want to go check out the web. Do a Google search for cutting butter into flour. And it should bring up how to do it. But what you do... So let me back up a little. If you have a pastry cutter, which looks like steel knuckles, you got a handle and then essentially four or five blades that look like a musical staff, and you push it down into the butter, and it chops up the butter, and we're going to just do that over and over until the whole mixture together, because it's mixing in with the flour and the oats, starts to look like crumbs. 
of something, graham crackers or whatever, if you don't have the pastry cutter. So you take your two table knives and you put one in each hand with the blade facing down as though you're going to cut something on your plate. And then you put them on each side of the butter and you just sort of cross them. You bring them across each other. They are flat to each other, parallel to each other. The blades are. And they will make this little slice in the butter. You do that over and over. And it chops up the butter in these little thin bits. You can kind of start moving your knives around in the bowl. The pieces will get small enough that they start to incorporate into the flour and oat mixture until you get them small enough that the whole mixture looks like crumbs. Right now, I have a mixture that looks like broken butter bits coated in flour and cinnamon and a lot of dry powder. I have to every once in a while stop and push the butter off the cutter and probably the knives as well with your finger. Just kind of rock that pastry cutter picks up the butter and mixes it with the flour and oats. And it's now starting to kind of gradually get small enough that I could pretend I'll be done with this soon. Cleaning off the blades one more time. The butter starts sort of creeping up the sides of the pastry cutter. What I'm looking for, more than the size of the pieces, is that there's no dry powder left in the bottom that everything has at least a little bit of butter touching it. All in all, the butter has got a coating on it. Beyond that, it's not critical that it be really tiny. I say crumbs, but well, crumbs is subjective, don't you think? So I have pieces now. I'll take a picture and I'll post it on the website for you. What I have now is pieces that are probably... Mm, they're not crumbs. They're crumbles. They're more... Like, hmm, I don't know. It looks a little like a dish of oatmeal. You know, the classic thing would be to say the pieces are the size of peas, but some of them are a lot bigger than that. This is silly. I'm just going to take a picture. I'll post it for you, and you can find it on the Cook Along podcast website. That was it. This is so easy. It's another one of my really elegant and endlessly tempting desserts that take almost no effort. There's a similar thing to this that I do with berries. And you can do it with the peaches too. I just had already done that. And so I didn't want to do that again. But I have it on the website and on your podcast list as rustic strawberry and blueberry tart. And it totally works with peaches as well. It's just using a pie crust instead of this crumble topping. I also have a berry crisp recipe that probably would work with this. Oh, I can smell that almond. Man, ugh. Okay, so just dump all of this on the top of the peaches and spread it around till it's all about the same depth. And then the whole thing here goes into the oven. It goes into the my in the toaster oven. It goes in for 45 minutes. I'm trying to level it out. I don't want the big deep pile in the middle. That would be not as much fun. Want topping on all of it, but not more topping than peaches. This goes into your preheated oven for 45 minutes, and you'll know it's done because the peaches are starting to bubble and the topping has gone golden brown, and it looks like you'd like to eat it. And there, my oven's ready for my peach crisp to go in. I'm going to put it in. You can serve this with ice cream if you want, but really, that's kind of overkill because this is quite sweet and the peaches themselves are so juicy it doesn't need anything else. But you know, vanilla ice cream on something like this is never a wrong choice. All right. I hope you enjoy this. Please let me know. You can leave me a comment on the website. You can also contact me on Facebook. I am the Cook Along Podcast on Facebook, and I love to hear your comments, questions, suggestions, recipe requests, anything like that on the Facebook page. And please tell your friends about the podcast. In fact, this may be one you want to share because it was so easy, and it uses fruit that's in season at the moment, assuming you're listening to this in August. Word of mouth is my best advertising. It's the only serious advertising I do. And it means that I'm not doing my work to advertise it. You guys are. So I'm asking you 
to help me tell people about what I'm doing here, and what we do together on the Cook Along podcast. Appreciate your help on that. I think you're going to love, love, love this excellent peach crisp. And until next time, happy cooking. Oh man, I wish you could smell his cooking.